Hey, how's it going? It's not going that great here. I feel like shit today. Um, my stomach's kind of upset. I've been sneezing a lot, and I've been groggy all day. So, bear with me a little bit. Um, I'm concerned about what's going to happen after October 1st. And you might ask, well, what's happening on October 1st? Well, Obama made it, so... Uh, domain names are no longer going to be handled by the U.S. government. And I think that's a bad thing because the U.S. government, I mean, we're one of the only countries out there. I mean, there's, there's some others, but we're one of the few countries out there that truly, truly respects freedom of speech. We can say a lot of things here that you can't say through most of Europe. We can say things here that you can't say in Canada. Um, we truly have freedom of speech here, and it's 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 one of the respectable things about this country. Um, and so, domain names are going to be handled after October first by a group of international investors. Some of them are from countries that don't respect freedom of speech at all. They're against freedom of speech. I mean, let's say China. You know. So, doesn't this essentially mean that uh, if someone's website goes against international law or goes against the law of some country, that their domain name could be shut down? Or there could be a threat of those domain names being shut down? You know, if you, you talk about the wrong thing discuss the wrong subject well you know have your domain name shut down and some people are saying well it's it's not really going to change anything and i'm thinking well how could this not change anything um i don't know i i i'm a little worried um does this mean that in the future there's going to be a number of websites you can't really access anymore via a domain name and you have to type in an ip address is that the future? Because that would suck. I mean, it's still going to allow things to be said, but man, that's going to suck. So what got me thinking about this is something that you're going to think, I mean, it's quite unrelated, but it still made me think about it, is how YouTube's uh, YouTube hero video was from Europe. The reason why I say this is, well, it's 25 frames a second. Um, the only reason to use that frame rate is for something that is either made in Europe or is marketed to Europe. Because um, it's it kind of follows within their um, the PAL standards, the PAL broadcast standards. Uh, what I mean by that is, you know, when, when we still had uh, analog broadcast television, um, the standard for countries that use 60 hertz for their, their uh, alternating current power um, use that same, you know, use 60 hertz to handle the the, the screen refresh. Uh, you know, uh, 60 half frames a second or 30 full frames a second. And in Europe, it was 50 half frames a second and 25 full frames a second. Whereas, you know, some of the televisions, you know, CRT televisions made in Europe had to have uh, more uh, phosphor uh, uh, in it so it didn't hurt your eyes as much. So the screen would still remain a little bit bright between each scan. So anyway, um, so that just kind of got me thinking. You know, well, why did they ch why are why did they choose either a company from Europe to make the video, or why did they make the video geared towards European? Uh, uh, broadcast standards. I just thought that was kind of weird. Unrelated. I, I'm not trying to say that these things are directly connected in any way, but it's it just still got me wondering. So um, I guess uh, I'll end the video now and I'm going to go lay down for a little bit because I feel like shit. So